everybody welcome back we're looking at some celebrities that got exposed on tiktok you get exposed you get exposed and you get a shark kiss Mwah! what the heck dixie's biggest red flag is that she's mean <laughs> Charlie has two big red flags. Oh, okay, I didn't know we were doing multiples. I got more. <laughs> she doesn't wake up to alarms. It's, it's, I literally cannot <laughs> do anything about it. I heard your alarm going off this morning. Second red flag, she fabricates stories in her favor. What? <laughs> You're laughing, I, you do that. Oh my God, no, you just don't see when you do anything wrong. Because you're lying. I'm not lying. You I'm think explaining this will how I feel. Oh! So it's not all sunshine and rainbows in the D'Amelio house, is it? <laughs> I can't tell if uh, Dixie's telling the truth or if she just has a love-hate relationship with her sister. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. Hey, this is probably gonna piss you off. Imagine you're driving and Drake, the wheelchair kid from Degrassi, pulls in front of you. But it's not just his car. His entourage is one sedan and three SUVs. And his asshole bodyguard physically gets out to block traffic with his body. So Drake's four car entourage can get ahead of everyone. I had, I had right away, I don't care. Are you the police? No, I'm ju I just have your license plates and I'll just report you, no problem. Wait, no, what? you don't. What? Good job, take it. I'm gonna start calling celebrities out on this garbage. Yeah, we get it. Drake's probably late to his girlfriend's middle school graduation or whatever, but that doesn't mean his four-car entourage gets to cut traffic, <laughs> and it's certainly no reason to send frickin' Thick Thanos here, frickin' <laughs> Heisenberger, to block everyone from moving forward. If he wants to cut in line, he can roll down the window and ask nicely. And if he gets told no, then he's gotta wait in traffic like the rest of us. Look, if you ever learn anything from me, it's this. No matter how rich and famous some of these celebrities are, None of them are more important than you. That's what's up. I'm sorry. Let me just take some time to process this. Drake thinks that he can stop traffic so that his entourage can drive together? Does he think he's the queen? Rest in, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, I'm not sure that's how that works. See, yeah, this is the thing. If Drake just kind of popped his head out of his window, he's just like, hey man, would you mind if we just kind of snuck in here together? What is the big deal? Why do you guys all need to be driving together like in a wolf pack? You know what I'm saying? It's a bit odd. Is this Toronto? Oh yeah, those are streetcar tracks. That's for sure Toronto. <laughs> Buddy, you know how bad the traffic is in this city and you're trying to like essentially make it worse? Ah, uh, to be a celebrity as big as Drake. The fact that he even thinks he can do this says something. Hi friends. So I'm starting a new series talking about all the reasons why I think that Dr. Phil is not the lovable TV psychologist that we are all so familiar with. I have a lot of issues with Dr. Phil, ranging from the blatant exploitation of the guests that he invites onto his show, to the verified reports of him being inappropriate with a past patient, scamming his trusted viewers, as well as regularly inviting predators onto his platform to gain sympathy from his audience. I could talk about this for hours, so let's get started. So Phil McGraw, AKA Dr. Phil, is a well-known TV host who has been on the air for the past 20 years. He has a PhD in clinical psychology, but he is not licensed to practice in any state That's in the true. US. So that we can better understand why this man is no longer <laughs> licensed to practice, we're gonna need to rewind all the way back to 1988. So when Dr. Phil was 38 years old, he was working as a therapist in a private practice that he shared with his father in Texas. During this time, Dr. Phil made a huge mistake by hiring one of his patients who was a 19 year old female to work for him at his practice. This issue alone raised a red flag that caused the Texas State Board of Examiners of Psychologists to become involved as this is a massive ethical violation. During their investigation, this 19-year-old patient shared with the board that she and Dr. Phil had engaged in a brief physical relationship as well as a codependent relationship. According to this patient, after beginning treatment with Dr. Phil, he became overly involved in her life and went as far as to call her multiple times a day, demand what her whereabouts were, and even wanted to know what time she went to bed at night. She also shared an instance where she had an amazing opportunity to work for one of her professors at her college at Houston University. But when sharing this opportunity with Dr. Phil during one of their sessions, he reportedly did everything in his power to persuade her to work for him instead. 
She reported how she felt trapped and felt like her therapist had become dependent on her. And I will note that Dr. Phil was married to his current wife, Robin, during this time. Concluding their investigation, the Texas State Board publicly reprimanded Dr. Phil for his actions, and they also required that every single one of Dr. Phil's therapy sessions would need to be supervised for a full year before he could resume his normal one-on-one -on -one sessions. The Texas State Board's full report is still available online today. The board was also requiring that Dr. Phil had to take ethics classes before he could resume his practice. He had no interest in doing any of these things, so he simply moved and opened a consulting firm. 2006 was the year that Dr. Phil officially surrendered his license, but he was cited for practicing psychology without a license or certification in 2008. When you watch the Dr. Phil show, you will often hear him say to his guests, I can't diagnose you in the short time we have together. But in reality, he cannot diagnose anyone with anything, period. He's completely unlicensed. This is literally just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, uh, I mean, I heard about this, but I didn't realize how in-depth it was. I'm sorry, but how is he allowed to go on TV and give people therapy for millions of people? and call himself a doctor? How's that allowed? How is that allowed? As if we didn't need another reason to hate James Corden. Keith McNally, a New York-based chef, has banned James Corden from his restaurants for abusing the servers. He posted this Instagram today with the caption, James Corden is a hugely gifted comedian, but a tiny cretin of a man and the most abusive customer to my servers. He then goes on to give two detailed examples of when James Corden was really abusive to his staff. All right, I'm sorry, we're gonna read this. In June, James Corden was here on table 6-1. Although this is diabolical, it happens very occasionally in all restaurants. After eating his main course, Corden showed the hair to Baltazar manager G, who's very apologetic. Corden was extremely nasty to G and said, get us all another round of drinks this second and also take care of all of our drinks so far. This way I don't write any nasty reviews in Yelp or anything like that. So whose hair was it? Report number two. James Corden was at Baltazar with his wife on October 9th for brunch. He asked for a table outside. Brunch maitre d' Ali Walters took the party to table 301. Mr. Corden ordered an egg yolk omelet. A few minutes after they received the food, James called their server and told her there was a bit of egg white mixed with the egg yolk. Uh, MK informed the floor manager. Kitchen remade the dish, but unfortunately sent it with home fries instead of salad. That's when James Corden began yelling like crazy to the server. You can't do your job. You can't do your job. Maybe I should go into the kitchen and cook the omelet myself. MK was very apologetic and brought G over to the table. He returned the dish and after that, everything was fine. He gave them promo champagne glasses to smooth things out and said that Corden was pleasant to him, but nasty to the server. MK was very shaken, but professional that she is continued to finish with her shift. I'm sorry, if you hate going out to eat so much, why do you do it? Maybe because some people have realized that when you're mean and you complain, you get free shit. It's just so funny because he has such a different persona on camera. He's just like this lovable little teddy bear that sings songs in the car. And sometimes I feel like it's better to not have that persona and just be honest. You're a dick. Ricky Gervais is a we love him for it. And that way, no one can expose you for not being who you are on television. Christina, not too long ago, and she said that she saw you in a club, and it was when you'd bro just broken up with Justin. Did she tell you that she tried to kiss me? Yes. Is that a CD UK exclusive? Yes, she did. Yeah, we were at a club and she came to me and she put her tongue down my throat. I was like, hello, I haven't seen you in two years. How are you? Yeah, it's kind of much. She likes you. Yeah, obviously. Because um, because in the meantime, she told us that she was giving you advice about the breakup with Justin and oh. stuff. <laughs> oh, she was? Okay. <laughs> Got something else going on at the time? Um, no, I don't remember talking to her about that. And that is the tea. Wow. Okay. Ooh, interesting. I mean, I think all of us have kind of wanted Christina Aguilera and Britney to kiss. Didn't realize it actually happened. I'm here for it. <laughs> they have a lot of money to pay celebrities to tweet ads for Huawei, basically. Gal Gadot being one of them. So she's tweeted a bunch of Huawei ads 
and I noticed that while she's a brand ambassador for Huawei, tweeting ads about how much she loves her Huawei phone, if you look in the details of the tweet, it's always via Twitter for iPhone. It's like, whatever, she can oh, use an iPhone, stop I it. But I thought it was funny, so I just tweeted it. That's very oh my god, funny. that is hilarious! And I had Huawei reach out to me like, how did you find this? How did you know? Wait, 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 let's look at it. It says Twitter for iPhone! Stop it! Oh, that's just dumb. Didn't Oprah get called out for doing the same thing? <laughs> Kim is so relatable. I have always uh, been insecure about my trapezius muscle. And, you know, if she wants to not have one in her photos, why why does she need one? And I, I stand by this because, I mean, look at that. Who needs that muscle <laughs> supporting your neck? It's just like a, it's a stupid muscle. Okay, but Spencer, it's it's fatty, fat, fat. It looks like fat anyway. We don't love that. We want gr long, graceful necks. No muscles on our backs. I love how this is Spencer Pratt doing this. Any of you guys got a problem with the word God? Raise your hand if you got a problem. Hey, Tom Hanks, come pick up your broken brain, son. <laughs> I meant just uh, pay somebody to come do it for you because you're already done f it up. Wait. Tom Hanks' son went on a stage at Recovery Day in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada and asked people if they had a problem with the word God. Do my research. Research! Video has emerged of Hanks in the Manitoba capital last Saturday, despite his earlier anti-vax stance where he was slated to speak at Recovery Day Winnipeg, an event aiming to build awareness, challenge societal stigma, and celebrate the role that recovery plays in improving life, which turned into an in-person format for the first time since its inaugural 2019 edition. And you guys got a problem with the word God? Raise your hand if you got a problem with the word God. You got a problem with the word God? Get the f over yourself. And I mean that with love, brother. Do you want to drink knockoff RC Cola <laughs> or a real fucking Coke? Every step that led me to here on this stage talking to you guys is through the grace of God. Yeah, okay. Take your kids. Watch your mouth. <laughs> Come on up here, buddy. I don't think you can. Yeah. Why is this happening? Yeah. See, I'm used to this sh you guys. Part of my language for the children, but I speak from the heart and I speak bluntly. If you don't want your children to be exposed to profanity, then just take them somewhere this else. This is a family mouth, event. Respectfully. Well, I didn't share that with anybody. I tried to blend in and not have anybody. I never advertised that sh I don't want anybody to know because I just wanted to be treated like everybody else. But I'm telling you now, and if you guys are looking at me right now and you're thinking, oh man, you probably think he's so much better than me, this guy. Like Make that kid that was up here a few seconds ago. <sighs> I don't care today. I don't care. If you think that about me today, I don't care. Okay, I can't watch any more of this. This is, is he all right? You're right there, bud. I don't know if that was really that necessary. <laughs> uh, Tom Hanks, come get your son. <laughs> my mother told me on my 12th birthday that it was really my 13th birthday. Did you know Shirley Temple didn't know her real age till she was 13? What? Born April 23rd, 1928. She rose to stardom quickly after being signed with Fox Film Entertainment but they wanted her to appear more young and innocent. So her birth year changed from 1928 to 1929. And I remember I cried a lot that after I heard it, because I thought I'd lost a year. Where'd it gone? Age is just a number, sweetie. That's kind of messed up, dude. But also, like, I don't know if I would be mad about that. I guess finding out that you're actually a little bit older than you are would be a shock. But it just kind of confirms that, like, Age is a number. Biggest celeb hotspot that we went to was Kendall's 818 party. I wish I could say that this was the sickest party I've ever been to, but it just wasn't, you know? And the craziest part about it was like two days later, Kendall posted like a bunch of pictures from that party and it made it look just like the craziest party ever. And I was right. just like, wow. Like, it's funny how once in my life I happened to be behind the scenes of this thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just knowing how it really was really gave me like an insight on... I, and I know I'm 
totally we totally know like Instagram versus reality. Like what you see is not. We actually always what it know. Is. We always talk about it, but you never really know until you witness it's, it. It's a different. It was just like a whole different scale of like wow, crazy how this can be perceived so differently. So uh, Kendall Jenner sucks at throwing parties, eh? All right. I'm not sure if Kendall Jenner is my first choice for someone I would want to like party with. You know, I feel like. Jennifer Lawrence. I think I'd probably I'd probably party with her. She she looks like a good time. <laughs> if you could party with one celebrity, who would it be? And don't say me. Okay, you can say it. It's fine. Subscribe.